Well, hi there, everyone. I'm very excited to be here representing TNC, Tracy and Christina. Not as lethal as TNT, but just as dynamic. I'm Tracy Joyce, and I'm so pleased to be presenting with my friend and colleague, Christina Gremion. We are both here now as JAMF uh, sales engineers, but we've come from a long, extensive history in K-12 education. Rather not say how long, right, Christina? We've done right. everything from <laughs> we've done everything from being classroom teachers to guidance counselors to Christina was even the principal. So we have done it all. And as sales en engineers, we spend a lot of time talking to prospects and to customers. And we've noticed that um, many people that we talk to are moving some of their devices from Jamf Pro, which both Christina and I have a lot of experience with, to Jamf School. And they're wanting to take advantage of our education-focused MDM, the robust classroom management that comes with all of those great apps, and the parental controls that you can hand over to the parents when those devices go home. So in fact, if you haven't seen it, we are in another session called Jamf Parent, um, Parental Engagement with one-to-one -one iPads with our friend Adam, who is talking about how Jam Parent can also be used in the healthcare uh, pediatrics industry. So with that said, um, the title of this is how to be the IT hero, because we all want to feel good about how we are supporting our schools and how we are supporting our environments. And being that IT hero feels really good. Both Christine and I know this from, from experience. So um, we're going to be talking about how, what is the best way for us to be moving those devices from Jamf Pro to Jamf School. Christina here is going to give us the 30,000 foot view of what we're going to cover today. Thank you, Tracy. Yes, we want you to work smarter, not harder when it comes to moving these devices. Um, and where that begins is we need you to be very, very, very familiar with the Jamf Pro workflows that you want to keep and migrate over to Jamf School. Those favorite smart groups that you spent time uh, building that criteria just so, so that you targeted those devices to get them to um, uh, get the apps or the configuration profiles that you needed them to, to have. Speaking of configuration profiles, however you restricted or payloads that you built, uh, you want to make sure that you can mirror that or, or replicate that when it can, comes to uh, Jamf School. Next, you'll want to set up your Jamf School instance. Hey, we got to have that thing so that we can move this stuff over to it. And there's an awesome embedded setup assistance that assistant, I apologize, that comes with it that will help you do this. Um, before you start moving things, back them up just in case. Uh, we used to say when we were back in the Windows world, uh, SOS, save often sugar, down in the South, of course. Uh, <laughs> but yeah, you want to back it up. Back it up to some cloud source, uh, whether that's uh, the Google Cloud, the Microsoft Cloud, the iCloud, uh, but back up your devices, iOS, macOS. Um, also, before you start um, moving things in your Apple School Manager account, you want to uh, make sure you uh, address your Apple push notification certificates and your Apple uh, apps and books tokens. And we'll, we'll speak to that specifically uh, a little later in the presentation. Uh, you, by coordinating your Apple School Manager instance, you will set up yourself for success um, because when you're enrolling your devices uh, by way of automated device enrollment, if you don't have that MDM set up over there, you're going to have some obstacles. And last, after that migration, you want to go through a series of checks and balances to make sure everything is transferred over exactly the way you want it, it to. So yeah, uh, that global view of things, these are the steps we're going to um, go over with you. Uh, moving it back over to Tracy, let's talk about that planning. Yes. Thanks, Christina. Um, 
as the, the wise Benjamin Franklin said, if you fail to plan, you are planning to fail. And we all know failure is great sometimes, but not when you're switching over to a new MDM. So um, we have, um, oh, and also we do have a provided handout that goes along with a lot of the things that we're talking about today. So be sure to grab that. Um, but the first thing you're gonna wanna do is just really assess what is happening right now in your Jam Pro instance. You're gonna look at all of the different things that you have set up. Like we said, those smart groups. What are the configuration profiles? What are the scripts that you have um, pushed out onto those devices? And take a really good snapshot of what is happening before you even begin the process of setting up your Jam School instance. We want to be able to replicate as close as possible what's already happening and then be able to tag on all of those wonderful benefits that come along with moving yourself over to that education first um, MDM of Jam School. So um, after you have evaluated and you have come and you've documented everything that is currently happening in your Jamf Pro, the next thing that you're going to want to do is set up that Jamf School instance. And um, Christina, if you wanted to talk a little bit more about that, you mentioned the setup assistant, but I know you're going to go into it a little bit more here when we're talking about the actual setup process. Definitely, definitely. Um, again, within your Jam School instance, when you receive it, there will be about 10 steps. Uh, they look like green dots. Uh, they're very um, user friendly in that they're broken down in layman's terms and they walk you through uh, the steps within the steps of what you're going to do. It starts with your Apple, your APN, your Apple push notification services, where you go over there and you create a new one uh, just for your Jam School instance. It moves along to uh, setting up your um, device uh, MDM server, uh, and then it moves to your apps and books tokens and how to set that up. It leaves no stone unturned when it comes to setting your Jam School instance up for uh, it, your deployment, uh, your transitioning, however your model is uh, what you're choosing to do. Um, once you're getting that set up, what you want to do uh, as Tracy mentioned with that planning. Uh, let's go back to that and look at those configuration profiles that she spoke of. You're either going to create, recreate rather, on the Jam School side, or if there's something that is very persnickety and detailed, uh, I'll give you an example. There in the security world, um, whether it's the uh, the uh, something from uh, iBoss or Cisco uh, or uh, some other security vendor that has a specific configuration profile. Well, we can't recreate that. We just gather it again from that vendor and you're going to import it over to Jamf School. So uh, those types of things that are super important, but um, very, very specific. And it's not a recreation. It's just an importing of. Uh, placeholders, that's an optional. But if you you wanted to uh, get things ready before you actually deploy your devices, you could create placeholders, which uh, makes use of CSV files to name mm -hmm. your devices, to place them into groups, uh, to put them into different locations. If your Jam School instance incorporates locations, like you have several different buildings or several different sections that you're using the location uh, feature of Jam School to uh, organize, then placeholders is a great way to do that in bulk instead of doing it manually. Uh, and then your device groups we spoke of earlier in that planning step. Um, you want to uh, replicate that on the Jamf School side. And all of that criteria that was on the Jamf Pro side, it's on the Jamf School side. It's not called criteria, it's called filters. But you still have your and or, it's just uh, uh, the verbiage is slightly different. It's uh, all and or. So uh, yeah, replicate your smart group so that you can target those devices just like you did in Jamf Pro. Uh, now we're going to be uh, looking at your uh, backing up of your devices. So 
I spoke of this earlier, and I want to speak specifically, especially for your iOS devices, as they have to be wiped to uh, leave that old Jamf Pro uh, profile, MDM profile, back in the past and grab the future Jamf School MDM profile. Well, if you have... Uh, some data on there, the student data, staff data that you don't want to lose and you want to be able to restore back. Uh, make use of your iCloud and any other cloud service that you need to uh, back that up before you wipe because you will have to wipe. That is, uh, I will not use uh, that term, a negative term, but that is a necessity, okay, in order for that to be able to be done. All right, now we're going to move on to the step where uh, we are incorporating your Apple School Manager uh, technology, and I'll pass it right back over to Tracy. All right. So in Apple School Manager, um, there's, there's a couple of different ways that people end up doing this. Sometimes you're going to bring all of your devices over in one fell swoop. Sometimes people, and I have um, customers that want to do this, that want to test it out first. They want to bring a few over or they want to pilot it. Um, both of those are uh, able to be done. And it's just a matter of um, creating the perfect setup in Apple School Manager. So um, best practices show us that we're going to take care of apps and books first. So we are going to create a new location in Apple School Manager. And um, in order to do that, you are going to go down into um, your Apple School Manager account, and you are going to create a new location. And once that new location is created, um, when you go into your account and you look at payments and billing, um, you will see that there is the token that is able to be downloaded at that point. So um, it, it's um, down there in your account on the left-hand side, kind of towards the bottom where you can, um, where you can access that um, token that you need to download. And then once you have downloaded that token, you can upload it back into your Jamf School account. So... Um, after that communication has been set up, um, because we know that um, it is always recommended that you only use one Apple School Manager account to integrate, um, you, we're not breaking anything by creating a new location and downloading that new token over to Jamf School. Um, if we were to take the same token we were assigned to Jamf Pro and then try to move that over to Jamf School, that's where the communication breakdown would happen. So the process that we're walking you through right here helps to support what is best practices and that we want to be sure that we are using one token for one location at, at a time. Um, after that communication has been set up, that's when you can revoke that token from Jamf Pro and then um, and then move move everything over to Jamf School at that point. So it it is um, it's a process again that is part of the planning process that you really want to be sure that you are thinking in advance of how you're going to create that new token, move it over to Jamf School so that you can. Um, not try, be trying to have the same token talk to two different MDMs. That's not good. Um, and all of this sets you up for a really smooth process when you're creating um, the automated device enrollment process, which Christine is going to talk about next. How do we then, you know, take advantage of that really zero touch deployment when we want to move our devices over into Apple uh, or into Jamf School? So go ahead, Christina, and Walk us through that process. Sure, sure. So now that you've got your content taken care of, now let's deal with the devices. So similar to uh, the process that Tracy spoke of, we need a new MDM server created in App School Manager, ASM abbreviated here, on the Jam School side. Uh, I'm in Apple School Manager for the Jam School side. Um, and then once you get that new server created, it will uh, afford you a token that you will add to Jam School. Um, remember, as uh, Tracy spoke earlier, this is in the lower left hand corner of your Apple School Manager uh, platform. Uh, when you click on your account name, you'll see preferences. And then once you click preferences, you'll see the MDM uh, area. Um, 
once you get to the MDM area, you'll see a little plus sign and that's where you'll add another MDM server and then you'll enter uh, Jamf School or some iteration of that name. Why do you want to be specific with that name? Because you want to be able to identify uh, which server is which when you're assigning your devices. You don't want them all to say MDM. Uh, which MDM? Uh, hey, I've crossed that bridge before with a customer or two. So please be specific with your naming so that you uh, aren't looking for your devices on the other side uh, of your MDM journey. Uh, once you get that server named and done, then you're going to upload what we call your public key. Uh, it has an extension of .pem or .pem, as we call it, uh, that you're going to get from the Jamf school side. And that just seals in that communication back and forth between the Apple server that holds your devices and the Jamf school server that's going to see your devices and allow you to manage them. Um, click Save. Remember, SOS, save often sugar, and then you'll um, be able to download that server token and all will be well. And you'll be able to, let's not forget, clean up by uh, removing that uh, device enrollment um, uh, token from the Jamf Pro side because we don't need it anymore. We're moving, migrating, transitioning from Pro to school. Um, once we have done that, then you're going to specifically talking about iOS. Remember, we're going to wipe those devices so that we can get that old Jamf Pro profile off, get the new Jamf school profile on there and then uh your mac devices have more enrollment options because of that jamf binary and uh now all of your devices should show up in the jamf school section of automated device enrollment and that's where the real magic happens where you can automate that enrollment you can skip setup screens because you're going to create an automated device enrollment profile that affords you the ability to set up whatever uh, skip whatever setup screens you want uh you know uh, get as granular on your enrollment uh, as you like. If you want to put in a terms of, um, of usage agreement in there, you could. If you have eSIMs on, in your devices, uh, you could uh, configure if those If you want there. people to authenticate, if you want people to authenticate on oh, enrollment, that's, a good that's another place that you, you can do that. Um, and I like yep, how, and, and I think we mentioned this, but in the setup assistant, like one of the the, la the final steps is creating that automated device enrollment profile. I like to call that like, it's it's like the welcome wagon for your Jamf school instance. It's like the first thing those yeah. devices, when they're coming from Apple School Manager, it's the first thing they're gonna check in with. So um, I, I tell prospects all the time, like don't worry if you don't, you're not gonna see your devices right away in inventory because they're sitting there in that automated device enrollment until they get until the welcome wagon comes over and gives them their basket of goodies, they download that profile, mm -hmm. they skip all that setup assistant stuff that we don't need to do anymore. Maybe there's authentication. We always have to check that and make sure that are we asking our end users to authenticate on, you know, the first time they enroll or turn on that device. And then, um, and then, then we get to see that that first profile has been pushed onto those devices. So. That is absolutely the, correct, Tracy. Thank mm -hmm. you. Yeah, yeah. One, and, and that's one of those things, and, and Tracy and I can speak to this uh, because those are these are things that customers and prospects alike in Prowl come to us about, well, I can't see them in my device list. Well, they're still waiting to get the welcome wagon and the package of goodies and go through the whole setup process. So yeah, we're just trying to help you avoid the pitfalls uh, or the caveats or the little, the little uh, things that people get stuck on ahead of time. So uh, yeah. we hope that uh, this, this has helped you. There's one more uh, step in that thirty thousand view, uh, thirty thousand foot view, and we want uh, I want Tracy to take you through that, and that is after you've done everything. 
Yeah. So just kind of bookending, you know, we got we we plan well to execute well, and then we're going to reflect and see how did we do. So this is um, things to look out for in your post migration checking. You're going to look at your device inventory. You've taken good notes before you moved everything over, so you know how many devices should I see in my in my Jam School account. You're going to look at the apps and the notes that you took about all of the apps. Are they being scoped to the right smart groups? Are they appearing where they're supposed to be? And same with the configuration profiles. So again, it's just a really good way to bookend this process of planning really well for your migration, doing the work in the middle, and then reflecting at the end and making sure that all of our T's are crossed and all of our I's are dotted. And I'm sure, Christina, isn't there like, there's a Southern term for all of this checking that we do at the end. I can't remember, you've, you've used it in the past before, but just make mining our P's and Q's or something like that. So this is where that comes Cross, into play. Crossing the T's, dotting the I's, making sure you're slipping, hanging if you're a woman. Uh, <laughs> All of those things, you know, all of those things. She's absolutely right. Yeah, you you want to make sure that everything landed, you know, you landed that plane, honey, you know, the way you plan to do so. Yeah, great. So hopefully we've given you this, um, this process. And again, like we said, there is a handout that's available for this that will walk you through the steps as well. Um, but we are going to pause here for a moment and just take a time, take some time to answer any questions um, that you might have. And we just thank you for attending our session. This uh, is another TNC TNC production, um, Tracy and Christina, uh, we are former educators uh, that have a passion for two things, technology and education. And uh, Tracy, I'll get, let you say a few words to our yeah. audience, but I just want to well, say just, thanks. Yeah, thanks for having us back again. We're really, we're really pleased to be able to present. And um, I think I, li I like how we ended it last time when we said TNC out. So. Maybe we uh, we can end That's that. That's right. <laughs> can see out. <Can't> see out. <laughs>